If you don't come from a place of abundance, gratitude and overflowingness, somebody else is eating your lunch while you're shaking. If you say, I'm gonna prospect every day for two hours and you don't do that and you don't make it up on a Saturday or Sunday, you are depleting your abundance bank. And when you deplete that enough, you also deplete your confidence. But when you become a man or a woman of your word and you do and say the things that you're gonna do and you actually do them and you show up for yourself, guess what happens? You start to see the world differently. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Super excited to have you here. Again, I come from a place of abundance and gratitude for you being here because you guys have helped us go on a trajectory like this over the last few months. And even though it might seem like, oh, well, you only have a few followers, every life that we get to touch matters. And we appreciate every single one of you. And we know that without your support, Without you, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. So I am grateful for you. My team is grateful for you. Every time we get a new person or, you know, we, we cross a new threshold, it's like, oh my God, we just crossed 250,000 views, which might seem small for, for some of the channels you follow and some of the people, but we are so thrilled that you are here sharing, subscribing, liking, commenting, engaging learning, growing with our content because it does make a difference. And my goal is to help 10,000 real estate agents live a life of fulfillment, not only just by making more money, but becoming healthier, wealthier, happier, living a more full life, getting in better shape, feeling good about themselves, not just making more money. So from my soul to your soul, thank you. Now let's jump into it today. There's a mindset that I have seen in real estate agents for a long time. And that mindset is actually a scarcity mindset. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that a lot of people, because they don't know where their next deal is going to come from, are very stressed out. Even people that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars that are very comfortable financially are so stressed out. And they still talk with a scarcity mindset. And I know because I lived it before I retired in real estate in 2018, right? Our best year ever, we did over, you know, one and a half million dollars in commissions. And I would still hammer my team. Where's our next deal? Where's our next deal? Where's our next deal? I was still anxious all the time. And I didn't realize it was because I was coming from a place of scarcity instead of a place of abundance, right? We had the skills, we had the coaches, we had the Zillow, we had the lead sources, right? We had the sphere of influence that we worked on for so many years to develop relationships, right? To take the cold online Zillow lead and turn that Zillow lead into a raving fan, nurtured them, loved them, cared for them. We still, even with the lead flow we had, we still were running in a place of scarcity. But that was because I was running in a place of scarcity. So my team was running in a place of scarcity. And do you think like being an anxious human being is like a very healthy thing to be? It's not. It's not. And so when we talk about the scarcity mindset, right? It's the mindset of coming from less than. Instead of the abundance mindset where it's coming where there's an overflowing pot, right? There's an overflowing pot. And guess what? There's always somebody there to scoop up that gold. The person who comes from an abundant mindset always knows there's more business out there, whether we're going through a recession, a depression, right? Or the market's going up, the market's going sideways. They are consistently doing it. One of my mentors, Terry, right? Every year, she'd over a hundred million, over a hundred million, over a hundred million. Market got hot, over a hundred million. Market got cold, over a hundred million always had a business that was doing insane numbers. Why? Well, her mindset was different, right? One of my, one of my mentors, Art, right? Super cool dude. I loved to hang out with him. His kid, not so much. Kind of pompous, you know, rich kid, whatever. Is, but, but Art fucking loved that dude. Super chill. And I remember we'd go out to, we'd always go to Indian Buffet. There's this little restaurant that we both loved. And uh, 
whenever he or I were in the office and it's kind of like pop my head next to her, I'd be like, yo, want to grab lunch? He's like, you know, I do. And would drive and his phone would ring and he'd mute it. And he'd put it, he's like, oh, I apologize for my phone. And I'm like, bro, answer that thing. Like, that's money. Like I, I saw the builder's name pop up on your navigation. He's like, no, 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 it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I'm like, answer the phone. It could be a buyer for your listing. It could be a new client. He's like, Vic, if I answered the phone every time I was out with friends and family, I would never have any friends or family. I said, but, but he's like, but what? He said, I'm with you. I'm in an appointment. This appointment's meaningful to me. You matter. If those people don't want to do business with me because I didn't run to their beck and call, I don't want to work with those type of people. He says, I want to work with people who I want to work with. Like, I want to work with people that trust me. I want to work with people who are okay with me not picking up the phone because I'm doing something else. I'm like, so, so what do you say when you call him back? You're not like, you're going to tell him you're at lunch with like some other agent that is in your office. He's like, first off, you're not some random. He's like, I like you Vikram and I don't need to tell him anything. I wasn't available and that's it. He's like, if I choose to tell him something, let's say I was having lunch with a friend. Oh, holy shit. What? And first off, I'm honored you, you consider me like that. But two, like I, I'm, I'm honored to be in the same league as you. You know, you're going to sell 300 homes this year. How, how do you not get the anxiousness? How do you not get the jitteriness when your phone rings and you don't answer it? When you can't answer it, right? He's like, because I've trained myself to come from a place of abundance. I know that if this person doesn't work with me, there's somebody else that would be a better fit. I know from years of experience that working with this needy client that abuses me because they don't value my time, they don't value me, is going to cause me a lot more pain than by working with the person who does value me. He's like, if you called me Vikram, and I didn't pick up the phone and I called you back the next day because I was out with my wife on a date and we were in the city and we started at 4.30 and we went to this bar and then we had some cocktails here and then we had some wine here. We did this there. We did that there. If I, if I called you back the next day, would you be like, oh my God, and start screaming and yelling at me? Be like, no, I'd be like, hey man, was it date night? I'd be like, it was date night actually. And then you'd probably say, What'd you do? And I said, that's exactly what I'd say. I'm like, what restaurant did you go to? What wine did you drink? Because I know he drinks great wine. He's like, exactly. Would you be upset with me? I'd be like, no, because I hope one day that I have a wife that I can go do a crazy, awesome, beautiful date night with. He's like, exactly. That's why I, that's why I enjoy hanging out with you because it's no pressure. He's like, now, if you have a client that calls and says, why didn't you pick up the phone? I called you last night at 830. Where the F were you at? How excited are you going to be to ever answer their call? Like, not at all. I'm like, I got clients like that. He's like, and how excited are you to really work extra hard for them? I'm like, I can't wait for the transaction to be done so that we can take them out of our client list and never, never talk to them again. He's like, exactly. He's like, so I just manifest what I want for the last 20 years of my life. He said, 20 years ago, I had a client just like that. And I said, I'm never going to work with a person like that again. And if I do accidentally work with a person like that, I'm going to sit them down and give them my rules that I require, right? My boundaries that I require in order to work with somebody. And I said, what if they said, we don't want to work with you? Vikram, there's plenty of people, plenty of people buying real estate in every market. And I've been through all of them. I've been through 25% interest rates. I've been through 2008. I've been through the dot com, right? The 2000s. I've been through all of them. He said, and guess what? There's always somebody buying. There's always somebody selling. If you don't come from a place of abundance, if you don't come from a place of gratitude and overflowingness, somebody else is eating your lunch while you're shaking, wishing your phone was ringing. One of the ways that you cultivate this mind of abundance, right? One of the ways that you cultivate this mind of, oh my gosh, overflowingness, right? Is we work not only just on our mindset, but we work on our skills. And we do the things that we say we're gonna do. 
If you say, I'm going to prospect every day for two hours and you don't do that and you don't make it up on a Saturday or Sunday, you are depleting your abundance bank. And when you deplete that enough, you also deplete your confidence. And when you deplete that enough, you're left with that shaking nervousness all day long. But when you become a man or a woman of your word and you do and say the things that, you, that you're going to do and you actually do them and you show up for yourself, but you invest into yourself and you learn the skills, guess what happens? You start to see the world differently. And you say, you know what? You're right. We had a sales call the other day and I thought it was going to be a total awesome sales call. Person reached out, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the call, they said, we, we, you know, we, we have to do a couple of things before we can sign up with you, blah, blah, blah. And I reached out to my assistant, Ray, and I was like, oh, Ray, she, she, she asked me how the call was. And I'm like, they didn't sign up. And I was a little bummed about it. And I followed the process, did the things. And she goes, that's all right, Vic. Like you always say, this one's probably not ours. Let them go. Let them go. Go find the ones that do want to work with you. And I was like, God, I want to just strangle somebody, right? Like I was, I was mad at myself because I could have probably done a better job. And she says, this just isn't the one. Should I go for a walk? Should I do the things that you tell your clients? Go for a walk, come back, sit down, do what you need to do, make your calls, reach out to the people that actually want to work with us. Go find them because they exist, right? Go find them. They exist. They're in our database. So we got thousands of names and numbers in there. There's no shortage, Vic. I was like, ah, you're right. So sometimes even we need, we need a little bit of love from our people to remind us that, hey, there's always opportunities. The question is, are they going to come to you? Are they going to go to somebody else, right? Are you causing them to come into your world because of your mindset? Are you causing them to go to somebody else because you're pushing them away? If you enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor hit the subscribe button. If you want to join me in my personal Facebook group, the Real Estate Sales Dojo, where I go live, I break down calls for you for free. We go over what's working in the market. I share my scripts with you guys. If you want more and you're not quite ready to sign up, join us inside the Real Estate Sales Dojo. You never know, maybe we role play with you. Maybe we break down one of your sales calls if you record them and you get to get some real inside trader tips on what your prospects are feeling from somebody who's been there. So the real estate sales dojo, go there, join now. There should be a link somewhere on the bottom. I think it's over there, like right there, or it's over there. And then there's other videos over here, or maybe they're over here. I think they're on this side or they're like this. Go, go watch a couple of videos and like, subscribe, send this to a friend. Again, we appreciate you on our team. Because without you, we wouldn't be here. I'll see you soon.